trying to discern as to what that is. Like a coffin with a sword in its chest. Oh, you're too close. Oh, no. After taking a huge step forward towards our off-grid setup, with new solar and battery systems in place, it's time for us to leave Lefkas Marina. Next destination, Sabota Bay. Indulging in a huge and exclusive adventure planning session with some of the biggest players in the Greek sailing world. If you're new here, we are Martin, Sharon and Taylor. Welcome to Sailing Trinity Season 2, A Greek Sun Odyssey, around the island in 80 days. Ready to dive into today's adventure, friends? If you'd like to see more of our odyssey, hit the like and subscribe button now. Your engagement does wonders for the channel. Without further ado, let's dive right in and escape the ordinary together. now to leave Lefkas, uh, heading on to our next destination. Pretty will be moving out of this berth where it's pretty tight in between the cats and there's other monohole, tight squeeze but not too much wind. With our solar upgrade complete and a new dinghy davit system installed, we are ready to leave Lefkas Marina. Feeling more self-sufficient and prepared, we set sail once again for Savota Bay. Located on the southeastern coast of the island of Lefkada, nestled in a sheltered inlet and approximately 16 nautical miles from today's starting location. Let's keep up. Just in time, look how many boats are coming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it looks like there's lots of charters coming back in and the bridge left us in the left cast canal must have just opened because there's about six boats behind us. So we left just at the perfect time where it may have been a bit of a struggle getting in and out. All right, so back through the canal now on the way to our next destination. It's so pretty. It's just so beautiful. <laughs> Look at these catamaran wakes. <laughs> Having a little Amalfi Coast trauma in the left cast canal. <laughs> I promise that I do have other clothes, but I am just becoming my father. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. So what happens is the clothes get washed and they go on the top of the pile and dad just puts the sand in and it's the same t-shirt again. That's what really happens. Guilty or guilty? Guilty as charged. Uh, guilty as charged. Fashion police. Yeah. <laughs> Stick them up. Con convicted. Also, I must say, we're looking pretty swank with our new solar and our pulleys and everything. It's feeling a bit more liverboardy now. Yep, solar looks great. Pulleys look awesome. Solar's producing tons of amps current into the lithium batteries. Thank you, land power. <laughs> Pull up. Almost out of here. Oh, probably be the last time we go through that canal for a while. We're not going back that way for the rest of the season. No? No? Last time? Last time? Yeah, we won't be coming back to this canal for a long time. We're on our way south. Nice. Thought I'd give you a look at the new uh, Davids set up and the pulleys. Got like a, a bullseye here. Got a couple of cleats on that one. That line runs over to the wind shear, which is great. Got one of those on each side. Line over there, a line up the front. And the same on the opposite side. That's the lifting mechanism. Trying to discern as to what that is. We're thinking it's a dinghy. That's sand. But it also looks like a, a sarcophagus, like a coffin with a sword in its chest. Oh, it's scuba diver, I would say. In the coffin? <laughs> Honestly, it really looks like a, a medieval. <laughs> Tomb, burial tomb. It's not a dinghy. Cracking out the binoculars for this one. We simply must know. It is a, it's a marker float. And maybe they're doing some work on it, some marine work. It definitely looks temporary, if anything. Can I have a look? Oh, I have to find it now. Yeah, it'll be quite close. It'll be a lot closer to you than you um, expect. It looks very sun damaged. 
But it wasn't bad two days ago when we came down. Is it on the chart? No, but there is something on the chart. So yeah, I it, spy with my binocular eye. <laughs> something beginning with... It's definitely a medieval circle. <laughs> or available. Oh. oh, you're too close. Go away. <laughs> we have finally made it to the mouth of Savota Bay. Let's check in. So much development going around here. And George and Inus, our sailing teacher, who we're going to be seeing, says that there's been so much development going on. And every time we come here, there's more and more houses. Especially after winter, there would have been a lot of development. Check it out. All right, so we're just going to contact the owner of the pontoon that we are heading into. It's pretty easy, just a stone two with a lazy line. So we'll get into that and then contact you guys after. It's pretty favorable. There's like no wind at all. Nothing to worry about. Soon we docked smoothly on Trocolo Pontoon, thanks to minimal wind, great direction from Marinero Ron, and a calm Captain Martin. This arrival is particularly special as we've come to attend the wedding of our sailing instructor, in which you are all cordially invited to by proxy of this YouTube video. Let's get scrubbed up on some wedding etiquette then, shall we? Greek weddings are packed with joyous Orthodox traditions. After the church ceremony where crowns, Stefana, are exchanged, rice or confetti is thrown at the couple to bless them with prosperity and fertility. Guests also shout good luck as part of the fun, and kufeta, sugar-coated almonds, are handed out as symbols of sweetness and endurance. These weddings are often quite large, however, an intimate ceremony with friends, family, and townsfolk was had today instead. The festivities then kick into high gear in the evening, featuring non-stop dancing as traditional music fills the air while food and endless selection of greek favorites is served throughout the night yeah, there is more food that was the first round look at you hungry A feast that we thoroughly enjoyed. So much in fact that we still had an appetite the very next morning. Let's go see if it lasts. <laughs> no, that was here. No, that was here the last time. Yeah. All right, breakfast time. Yeah. Go, 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 go. Have you got your your poor fender ready? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I hope they're okay. That is so stressful. Captain Ron saved the day. They hit the French boat next to them, about a twenty footer. Which, I mean, I feel really bad for them. The boat, we've all been there, but they weren't working with the wind, or they they have two engines and all these things. I hope they're okay, but do. We were having breakfast over here and we just ran just to protect the boat just in case. Oh, such is life. Good morning, happy Sunday. Well, they, they, uh, they're secure. They are secure. All right, shall we go eat breakfast? Uh, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. we're okay. We're good. We're not, good. No, I don't think they're gonna let me go back out. No, probably not. Well, what actually happened is the captain Ron was ready to leave. The captain was not really doing exactly what I told him to do. Yes. He didn't pay attention to the wind, yes. just slow him. 
the wrong direction and he was giving way too much throttle with the engine mm -hmm. and from the moment he left he didn't look around the passerelle should be up and mm. it was hanging to way out yes when he swing yeah he catch the line from the boat yeah and he was hooked in there then he panicked yeah he of course started throttling with the engines mm. and he went in with the propeller in the mooring line yeah he got stuck and then you can't leave Such a you swing. Can't do nothing in uh, the only thing that i could do release the line from the pontoon yes swimming swing him around the boats yes parking back and get a diver yes he tried to do it yes. he put his toe in the water but it was too cold yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> no 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 so he said i don't care what it costs get me a diver yeah. on the end I lose one mooring line, the diver had to cut it, yes, unfortunately, yes. Yeah. Um, but they got free and they can yeah. continue with their holidays, wherever they go for a glass of wine. Yes, They're yes, a glass of wine, wine. <laughs> <laughs> a bottle I think, exactly. Okay. oh yes. wonderful, yes. thank you very much, okay. we'll see you soon, okay. we will, thank you. After an adrenaline filled morning, assisted by the superhero Captain Ron himself, we decided to walk off the energy and enjoy the morning, exploring as a family. Come and join us! We could give him some, <laughs> some lovely flowers from the lovely restaurants. <laughs> Two beautiful flowers. Cart Rapids. <laughs> Little pebble beaches. Yeah. Yeah, they're very cool though. So if you're ever down here in Savosa Bay, the wonderful Trocolo Pontoon and the even more wonderful Ron will be there to assist you. Even if uh, you're a catamaran getting stuck on the way in, <laughs> Captain Ron will save the day on the dinghy. <laughs> it's a wonderful pontoon. We've stayed here twice now, both times we've been back to Savota. Electricity and water are included, but good. And they also have Starlink Wi-Fi, which is great. Or even if you just want to watch our videos, you can use it for that as well. Non-sponsored, just full of love, Trocolo Pontoon. I know, I'm joking. Look where we are right now, too. There's two little beaches in Savota Bay. And this is one of them. Do a flip! <laughs> nice. Perfect pontoons aside, Savota Bay has a lot more on offer. It is a breathtaking spot where the natural world thrives both above and below the water, framed by lush hills, home to Mediterranean flora, and a variety of birds and small wildlife. The bay's underwater life is equally vibrant with diverse marine species like sea urchins, octopi, and other colorful fish, making it ideal for snorkeling and diving. The town itself holds historical significance as a harbor for ancient seafarers. The town also is very cozy and inviting, a place where everybody truly feels like family. It's the kind of place where locals will greet you warmly and small businesses line the streets, offering a taste of authentic Greek hospitality, cuisine and artisan goods. Whether it's a quaint cafe or a taverna by the water, you'll find plenty of spots to support and enjoy. This sense of close-knit community combined with the stunning surroundings makes Savota Bay an unforgettable destination for travelers. Now, back to some more perfect pontoon chat. time for everything. That's how they put pontoons in if anyone was interested. Yeah, they all have to... Oh, there is a line there, they are towing each other. As we prepare for the rest of our 80-day journey, we're thrilled to be working with Ionian Mode Sailing School, our Season 2 sponsors. Based here in the heart of Savota Bay, Ionian Mode is renowned for their top-tier ROIA certified sailing instruction and deep local knowledge of Greek waters. Led by Principal George Nunes, a highly skilled sailor and experienced instructor, they specialize in mile building trips across the Ionian and Aegean seas. They'll be helping us plan the rest of our adventure, ensuring that we make the most of this incredible voyage for us and for you guys. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm getting some B-roll for the episode. I own your mode school, stay there, stay there, be a big sign. 
Now let's get the let's get the flags. Our journey will be divided into two thrilling legs, each covering around 600 nautical miles. First leg, which you began from Preveza in the Ionian, is now ready to take us into unfamiliar waters. We will sail around the Peloponnese into the Aegean and Cycladic islands, all the way to Kos in the Dodecanese. The second leg will then bring us back through the Argolic and Saronic Gulf, passing through the Corinth Canal to complete our adventure once again in Savota Bay. From the birthplaces of gods to the trials of heroes, our voyage will be steeped in legendary tales as we visit both popular islands and hidden gems. Excitingly, we won't be alone on this adventure. We'll have 24-7 shore support from Ionian Mode, who will guide us through smooth sailing and offer assistance with local insights and ex expertise. And of course, such an adventure won't come without its challenges. Navigating the powerful Meltemi winds around the Peloponnese and Central Aegean begs to test our skills and Trinity's endurance. The support of Ionian Mode, proper planning, and on-demand sailing knowledge promise this journey to be an exhilarating and deeply enriching exploration through the seas of Greece, and one that we cannot wait to bring you on. So, on the topic, whether you're dreaming of cruising around the world or starting your own yachting business, Ionian Mode has got you covered. With training centers in both Lefkas and Athens, they offer comprehensive training, from online and shore-based courses to hands-on practical instruction. From competent crew all the way to yacht master, they have trained and qualified over 500 skippers each year, preparing them for both recreational and professional sailing endeavors, us included. Additionally, their boat finder and buyer's agent services ensure you get the right vessel to match your sailing dreams. Use code TRINITY on any Ionian mode service and you'll receive some extra exclusive incentives. All links in the description below. So no matter your sailing goals, dreams or experience, Ionian mode will help you set your sails for success. Ooh, from witnessing a full circle wedding right in the bay where we first learned to sail to planning future adventures with seasoned sailors, we as the crew feel this milestone deeply. With new skills and adventures planned, we are ready to chart even more thrilling horizons. And for an added twist, a new experienced crew member will be joining the voyage next week. Who is this mysterious sailor you ask? Well, take a second to subscribe now and hit the notification bell so you don't miss the exciting reveal next week. What did you guys think about the Greek wedding traditions, huh? Share your thoughts in the comments below and the crew will get back to it. We can't wait to escape the ordinary with you. See you there, guys.